fourth time around, episode five. Hi, I'm Lisa. And I'm Joe. And welcome back for episode five. Wow. Has it been five already? It has. The last one was kind of, well, the last one we taped off schedule because we interviewed our teenager. Right. And the interview with the teenager was pretty popular Mm -hmm. on the internet. Yes, it's been downloaded several times. So thank you. Hope you all enjoyed hearing what the youth of America wanted. (laughs) The one question, Hollister, (laughs) pretty much. (laughs) That's all there is to it. The one question, the one question that I had for Rebecca that I meant to ask or I meant to have you ask her was what she thought of people like Lindsay Lohan, because I I saw well I saw today. Everything that I hear about her is that all of the teenagers think that she's like not one to be emulated because right. of her, her whole weight thing. And then I saw a thing today that said that Teen People magazine named her the number one most popular teen star, beautiful teen, what, or not even teen star, most beautiful female star Person. of the day. What, yeah. Hmm. Along with Jennifer Aniston, who frankly I'm really tired of now. Mm-hmm. Your kids certainly are not fans of, well, anyone who goes on any crash diets. No, but they were. The thing was is when, when Teenage Drama Queen came out and Mean Girls, then they liked mm-hmm. her because right. she was more like a real, a real chick back then, if I can use that terminology. But she was more like a real chick. Yeah. You know, here's the problem with teen stars. They start out, I think Britney Spears is an even better example because now she's kind of run her full course. When your kids were young, Brittany was in her teens. Right. And she was playing to a younger audience. Mm -hmm. About the time your kids got into later elementary school and early middle school, Brittany hit 19, 20 years old. And it's really, I think it's hard for a teen star, you know, if your fan base is eight years younger than you to keep playing to them when you hit when you hit 18 19 oh, 20 because suddenly you're not a kid anymore and you can't keep pretending to be a kid mm-hmm. and i think your younger fans have trouble with that yeah i think so but i think her appeal i mean Brittany I went a little sleazy i don't disagree <laughs> she, she went a little sleazy but, you know, I think part of that was she was 18 signing autographs for 10-year-olds. I think that messes up a teenager, you know, when all of your biggest fans are basically little kids. And really what you want is to be respected by your peers, so you feel like, well, I, I need to start acting like an adult if I want adults to respect me. Mm-hmm. And the next thing you know, you're dancing around with no clothes on. And then you get married and get pregnant when you're 21. Mm-hmm baffling you're forgetting she got married and divorced and then married again and got pregnant oh well that one that (laughs) that was nothing that was just a it was annulled actually it wasn't even she wasn't even married long enough to have to get a divorce and you know there's nothing wrong with a 24-hour marriage making decisions quickly in life and And early and then quickly in attempting to undo them hmm better try this one again do you ever do anything like not on the computer and then suddenly think control Z to undo. You are so geeky. I that know. That is so cool. I'll be in the kitchen and I'll like. Ooh, ma- control Z. Yeah, yes. it's true. Well, you see, you have to remember, I came from, I came from the Unix world. And there control, was no control. No, there is. Control oh. Z in the Unix world means stop or pause. Oh, that's interesting. So you can pause somebody and say, hey, uh, 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 I'm going to background you for a second. Oh, so like if your sink were overflowing, you might think control Z, just exactly. stop. That's exactly it. Control C would be a stop. And control Z would just be a pause and a Z and a control Q would be to start. Oh, control again. C is a break, right? Yes, that's exactly right. So there's your tech note for today, <laughs> folks. Hope, hope <laughs> you I enjoy that. And I think control that. C is copy. Since we were last with all of you, we had our Thanksgiving feast here. It was fabulous. Mm-hmm. We had some lovely company. That's true. My parents were here. And your kids. And the kids were here. It was an all Lynn weekend. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> you know what I have to say? The for Lynn, good or for all better of or worse. All of the Lynns always make me feel like part of the family. It's well, wonderful. there you are. Aw. 
especially when I cook. <laughs> <laughs> so what do we have? We, we'll recap. We had the turkey. We had the... There was more food than I could even... I mean, I, I don't know what I was thinking in planning this menu. It there was, was a lot. It was way overly ambitious. Joe pretty much took over the turkey mm-hmm. in that he ordered it and put it in the oven. There wasn't really... And I rubbed the butter on it and I rinsed and, it out and I... Oh, that's right. You got it all... That's what I meant by putting it in the oven. In you got it all... <laughs> I got it prepared. I, I All cleaned up and ready to go. Exactly. Um, Joe did a fabulous job with the turkey. Joe's mom showed him how to make tur- uh, gravy. Yes. And I'm... For like the 40th time, I might have. <laughs> and I meant to again? get in on that, but I missed it a little bit. It's okay, but I think I got it this time. But Joe can show me next year. But what we need to cover, though, is oh, the Oh, alert. Crane. Big big commitment talk there. That's right. Joe can show me next year. <laughs> the oh, cr- we... The cranberry sauce. Lisa last time promised to talk about the the mystery of the famous cranberry sauce. Well, when I was in my teens, about 10 years ago, my mom started making whole cranberry sauce. We had always gotten the jellied stuff sliced into sli- into discs, which I thought was fabulous. That I don't know if there are people out there who think that's like trashy, but I never did. I always enjoyed it. Um, and I was a fan of it. So we would get like the jellied cranberry sauce. All of a sudden, one Thanksgiving, my mom had the whole berry sauce. And I yeah. thought, I had no idea how she had done that. It was like, it was cranberry. I had never even magic. seen a cran, a, an actual whole cranberry. You cranberry was this thing that was shaped but, like an ocean spray can? <laughs> yeah. And look, you slice it. It grows on trees and you slice it. <laughs> and a couple of years later, when I was doing my own Thanksgiving somewhere, Mom, how do you make that cranberry sauce? And she was like... You buy the bag of cranberries in the produce section, and the recipe's right on the bag. (gasps) Is it hard? Will I have to get up early to do it? Is it like, do I need to buy anything special? (sighs) No, it's sugar and water, and you boil it for 10 minutes. Are you serious? It's that easy. Sure enough, I go out, and right there on the package, it says boil with water and sugar. Boil it 10 minutes, let it cool, and you can refrigerate it. For months. A few days. Not months, but a few days. Mm -hmm. So you can make it on Monday for Thursday. That's one great thing about it. So I've done this a couple times, and I like it because it it impresses people, but it's not really much work. Mm -hmm. This year we're planning the Thanksgiving menu, and I tell Joe I'm going to make whole berry cranberry sauce. Oh, no, 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 wait, wait. My mom has a great recipe for cranberry sauce. I'll get it from her, and we can make hers. Oh, okay. I'm a cool chick. I'm always up for mom's recipes. So... So I get an e- so I email Joe my emails mom. his mom for the recipe. And a couple and days she, later, she replies. I get a link. Oh, it's very simple. And there's a link. True to 21st century, my mom sends me a link <laughs> to the recipe, and underneath the link it says, "Oh, and by the way, the recipe's right on the ocean spray bag." It's the same the recipe, same recipe <laughs> that everyone in the whole freaking world uses. I think. Apparently, I had one time. I had somebody. Somebody had made like this jalapeno cranberry sauce. Actually, I didn't like it. I really like the classic. And now we've had like kiwi jalapeno spread on crackers with cheese. If you have a nice cracker and some nice creamy brie, then something a little spicy does something good for it. Yes, we bought that at um, Urban Harvest Mm -hmm. in downtown AH. In downtown Arlington Heights. Downtown Arlington Heights. Hey, head on down. Right across the street from Harmony Park. You know, Joe gets like two or three people a week. Oh, in an average week. Not even listeners telling him that he should be in radio. You know what I could be? I could be one of those people on those Time Life commercials (gasps) with Davy Jones. We had a thing back in the 60s called rock and roll. And then they fade to the guy with like a fake name looking at the camera. You know, like, like Kirk Stevens. You know, it's a great thing. I, I looked all over for these songs, and I found them all in one place. Make, you know, looking just off camera. You're not looking at the camera. You're, like, talking to someone off camera. Which, by the way, is a device that is used a lot, and I always hated it. Now, back to Thanksgiving. Joe did a fabulous job with the turkey. Joe's mom did a fabulous job providing the cranberry recipe and with the gravy. 
Becky helped me peel potatoes. That was wonderful. And basically, we cooked way, way, way too much food. Yes, but it was so good. Oh, and my mom brought pies. Magic pumpkin pie. Magic and pumpkin pie. Cherry and pie. Cherry pie. And we had mashed potatoes and... Corn. S- slightly gooey stuffing. Corn, crescent rolls. Beads, carrots, crescent rolls. There was food I didn't even eat. It didn't quite make it down to my end of the... Some of it didn't make it down to my end of the table. And some of it didn't make it to my end of the table. But it was all good. So it was a good time. A good time had by all. And then that evening, we spent the evening watching That Thing You Do. Where are we? I think it's time for us to do our cheap date. All right, Lisa. So what are we doing this week? Here we are. A couple days after Thanksgiving, we decided we needed to get out to eat with the kids. We went to Eclectic Cafe. That's E-G-G apostrophe lectic. Egg. Egg. Lectic. If you still don't get it, email us and we'll <laughs> straighten it out. I love eclectic. Now, I love CNA, or I'm sorry, TNTs, because they don't have any fancy stuff on the menu. Right. It's just the basics. Eclectic, exactly the opposite. What do we. There's stuff in here. I've Two different kinds of eggs benedict, eight different scramblers, eight different skillets. All kinds of oatmeal toppings. Waffles, pancakes. But for example, oatmeal at Eclectic goes for three dollars when they're it's a dollar fifty at TNDs. Right. Every kind of pancake, every time I I'm th- I think I see like twelve omelets here. Yeah. I know you're a f- you're a fan of the hayrig. Oh, you had the Iron Man. Well, that was I had some. Th- did I? Yeah. Oh no, I had the shroom scrambler. Now I think they changed this on me. Between from the last time I had it to this time, so I'm not going to talk about that. But the Iron Man is great. Egg white omelet. It has uh, sliced mushrooms, avocado, tomato, onions, and green peppers. And then um, to ke- see, start with the egg whites, layer in the vegetables. Then you get to keep it light, salsa, fresh fruit, and an English muffin. So you're looking at a pretty balanced breakfast there, but. You know, it's not your uh, fruit and yogurt parfait. Exactly. It's good. I know you're a big fan of the Hey Ricky omelet as well. The Hey Ricky omelet's a lot of food. I mean, I love omelets with, I love like gourmet omelets, but they're always so big. I mean, they say three eggs, but I mean, they must be. It's like 20. It is. I mean, they are huge. They're seriously probably like four or five eggs. Like half of it. And I, I mean, I absolutely, I can't go any further. Yeah. I had the, hang on. It's something, something that sounded really manly. Oh, the um, cakes, eggs, and meat. I'll have the cakes, eggs, and meat, which is two pancakes, two eggs any style, two slices of bacon, and two sausage links. You can feel your arteries hardening while you're reading this menu. All right. That's really good. The biscuits and gravy are really good, and their corned beef hash. Everyone's, every few years, I go through a corned beef hash phase. And he's in one right now. No, actually, I'm getting out of it again, because I because all it takes is a couple. It's winding down. It takes a couple servings of bad corned beef and hash <laughs> to make you kind of think, okay, okay, it's enough of this. Um, but they do have good corned beef. They do have good um, corned beef hash. And um, what else do they have that I like there? They, they, the stuff is, the food is really good there, and, and like Lisa said, it's the exact opposite of TNT. The one thing that, that tests me at Eclectic is if I'm sleepy at all, ordering is just a really daunting task. It's right. It's very complicated because all of a sudden, you're like, well, okay, I could, oh, I could have a blackberry banana pit. Oh, okay. oh. Mm-hmm. What, oh, what's the one thing? We saw Rachel Ray talking about this. On food TV, they were talking about a restaurant in New York that specialized in crepes and it was oh right their most popular one was Nutella and Banana Nutella and Banana right and you know what they don't have it on this menu that we have here but Eclectic does have the Nutella and Banana have, crepe which is like the most popular crepe in New York at their big at the crepe store and maybe it wasn't Rachel but thank God for that because I've had about enough of her <laughs> 
Any Rachel Ray fans out there? Yeah, let us know. The first Rachel Ray fan to email us or send us um, a, leave a comment on the web blog, we'll send them what? What if they hate Rachel and want to comment about that? Okay, name one thing. Okay, the first person to name something they hate about Rachel Ray. <laughs> you know what? Tell us your favorite. Actually, you know what? Tell us your favorite and your least favorite thing about Rachel Ray. There you go. And we'll send you something. Basically, first one we get right. wins. And, right. And we promise we'll send you something. It'll be something cool. It might not be like really expensive, but it'll be cool something in its own no way. Something with no cash value. <laughs> I can assure you of that. We were in a very low-budget show here. So anyway, that's Eclectic Cafe in Rolling Meadows. They are at 2905 Algonquin Road. It's a good place to go when you owe someone a good breakfast. Exactly. A good breakfast. And it's right next door to Russell's Barbecue, which we'll have to try at some point as well. Yeah. I've, I've gone there a few times. Lisa's never tried it, but it's really good. And you're allowed, because of the fact that Russell's is open only from dinner time on and Eclectic is only open for breakfast and lunch, they have a swap out program with their uh, parking lots. It's a right next door to Oh, and you know what? If anybody's local and actually going to go try Eclectic, um, they always look really crowded, but I don't think we've ever had to wait very long. No, we haven't. So even if it's crowded, just go check, because it's it's bigger than it looks. Yes, it is. Okay, so that's our cheap date for the week. Thanks, honey. Thanks, babe. Okay. All right, so moving on. Back to Thanksgiving, my father brought over and handed me a late Father's Day present or an early Father's Day present. <laughs> you take your pick. <laughs> this is Crazy Ed's original Cave Creek Chili Beer. Beer with chili pepper added, and it, it actually has a little um, jalapeno floating in it. Uh-huh. This comes from Crazy Ed's is located Cold Spring, Minnesota. Joe, I'm eager to try this. I, I'm eager for you to try it. But what did we learn in Mexico? Why do they put the fruit in the tequila? Yes, the tequila with the big peach in it, or, or the, the pear worm, in it, or, or the, the worm. Oh, that's right. The question was the avocado what, pit. I- exactly. We went to this, we, we stayed uh, last summer at, a, at an all-inclusive resort on the Riviera Maya, which I'm telling you, I am never, ever, ever taking a vacation again that's not all-inclusive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Yeah. One of the things that, one of the really cool things they did was they had a tequila tasting thing, and they told you, they told us how to tell good tequilas from bad tequilas and you know, how to go about picking a tequila and, and all the various grades and whatever of it. And he held up a co- he held up a bottle of the tequila with a worm in it. And he said, can anyone tell me why they have the worm in the bottle? And some people are like, oh, for the flavor. And he said, no, it's for the gringos. To impress the gringos. To impress the gringos. He said it does absolutely nothing. So just like... We saw tequilas that had pears or peaches or something like that soaking in it. And the guy said it's a, it's a thing to take up space in the bottle is what it is. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited about this chili pepper beer, but I wonder if the chili pepper is just there to impress the gringos. We'll see. Well, considering it came from Minnesota, eh? Oh. <laughs> to impress the youpers. Exactly. All right. Here it goes. <sighs> oh, you, can, you can hear that carbonation. So I'm going to pour this into a into a fresh, tall Joe's beer glass. Joe's lugging it, and it, no one's ever taught Joe how to pour a beer. I, it's fine, but it's all in the glass now, so that's good. Very little head, nice amber color. Mm-hmm. Very little head. The pepper and did the not. The pepper did not come out. You, t- I'll narrate. You okay. drink. The pepper did not come out. All right, here we go. He's sniffing. He looks it's kind of it's no. I, I'm amu- I'm actually amused. It looks kind of. It, it smells like jalapeno. And he takes a sip. A very manly sip. Okay. It's like drink, drinking jalapeno juice with beer. <laughs> Give this a shot. Is it going to be too spicy for me? I might need a little something. Should I have another beer ready just in case? Okay. Now I have this chili pepper beer. And this Molson with like four inches of foam. It's not four inches. It's like an inch and a half. There, do you know why the f- head goes down when you put your finger in a beer? Why? The oil on your skin breaks up the surface tension in the bubbles. 
Really now? Mm-hmm. My my brother bought my mom some Murphy's Stout, which is basically Guinness. Right. You know, only it's Murphy's. With the widget in the can? She has a th- She's had a three-pack in the refrigerator for like God knows how long. My, we're moving, and my brother says, "Mom, why haven't you drank that Murphy's yet?" And she's like, "Cause I don't know, I don't know how to how to use it." <laughs> and your brother's like, she's, "Mom, just pull the tab, and it'll go." And she's, but no, there's like, there's that, there's that ca- gas cartridge in there. <laughs> Mom, it's automatic. You don't have to. Just open. You, you don't, don't have to light the fuse. <laughs> you don't need a degree. All right, hit it, hit it now. Oh, 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 too late. You ruined it. <laughs> Dang. I would be the same way. Okay, here we go with the chili pepper beer. Here goes Lisa with the chili pepper beer. She's giving. Oh, my. I'll tell you what it reminds me of after you've had a taste of it. Oh, wow. She's making a face. What? Okay, now. What does it remind you of? I'm going to tell you what it reminds me of. You ready? Uh Uh-huh. Lisa's going to cleanse her palate off with a Molson Golden. This is very good, and thanks to my dad for bringing this. It is very good. It's very exotic. It is. Really. All right, now, I want you to close your eyes and imagine... You're sitting in a restaurant mm-hmm. with black and white checkered tables and mm-hmm. a sign outside that says steak and shake. <laughs> and you have the little thing on the table with the jalapenos in it. <laughs> oh, I've never used that. Oh, see, that's that's exactly what it tastes like. It tastes like the stuff that's on the table at steak and shake. It's very good. I think I would really like it with um, chips and salsa, chips and mild salsa. Yeah. Because that's pretty powerful Because it's stuff. spicy. Mm-hmm. It is. I'm going to take another little, another little hit off of this. It is, and it's extremely jalapeno-y. Yeah, I would say the jalapeno is not just in there to impress the gringos. It, it, it definitely There's has some, an effect. some serious jalapeno in there. Some, so some whacked out guys up in Minnesota you know, come up with It would be good with pizza, too. Let's order a pizza. Get that frozen pizza. Let's go. Okay. Well, we're going to have to start wrapping this up. So... We talked okay. about we, we talked about Thanksgiving. Much of a topic today, but we had some ground to cover. It was the holidays. It's it's we're now in the holiday season, so hoop de doo. <laughs> and Dickory Oh, it's peppermint mocha season. Yes, we can now officially order peppermint mochas at Starbucks. We refuse to do it until the day after Thanksgiving. That's right. Good for us. Um, what else? Lisa finally saw the Seinfeld Festivus episode, courtesy it's of her a brother Craig. Festivus miracle. <laughs> so. I've heard that. 10 billion times. Yes. When it was, what what was it? It was snowing on Thanksgiving morning. Oh, you know it's what? It's a Festivus miracle. So everything that happened for a week <laughs> was a Festivus miracle. So Lisa got to see that. We watched my favorite holiday movie, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. You're a mean one, Mr. Mr. Grinch. The voice of Tony the Tiger, who passed away not very long ago. But he did the voice. And Boris Karloff doing the narration. Becky and I made cookies. Mm-hmm. Sugar cookies, which are now sitting on my counter. As per tradition. Mm-hmm. So what else? Um, Joe bla- put up his Christmas tree. Put up it's the tree. All good to go. This picture in there, a picture of half the tree on my web blog. This is when I figured out the art of putting the lights on the tree, especially <laughs> with an artificial tree. And I'm sure people who have worked, especially in retail, know this already. Put the lights on the tree as you're assembling it. You mean one row at a time? Like you put a point. row of the branches on, then take the lights, wind them on, and then do the next row. So learn that little trick. So that um, Black Friday, we didn't do anything. We didn't go out to the show. Oh, actually, on Black Friday, um, you and Emma came down to my office with me in the Sears right. Tower. So we hung out there for a while. We did not do anything retail though but no i did not step into i was i'm proud to say i did not step into a retail store on the day after thanksgiving unless we went to walgreens that night not that i can recall but it's yeah but anyway it's, we it, didn't it, participate in that madness it, it's totally you know there was a time when it was fun actually in the in the late 90s early oos <laughs> there were no there were seriously lots of deals to have and it was actually worth it when when places really started doing it when best buy and places like that really started doing you know come in for a 599 computer but before it got like dangerous now it's insane yeah now on the daily show they keep showing that videotape of people getting trampled you know what that's it's not that's not at all what i mean it sounds obvious to say but that's not what the holiday season is about exactly that's why thanksgiving is my favorite holiday 
really personally, I work to push the holidays away from a commercial event and into a spiritual event. You're like a walking Charlie Brown Christmas. <laughs> Isn't you're there like anyone a, who knows like the a real meaning furry of Christmas? Buddha. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, more more words of wisdom from Ron Burgundy. <laughs> You're like a little furry Buddha. A little Buddha covered with hair. <laughs> <laughs> no, you need to watch Charlie Brown. Lisa has not seen. Let's let's put this out to the podcasting world. Lisa has not seen <gasps> You're a Charlie secrets. Brown's Christmas a Charlie Brown Christmas, and she has not seen It's a Wonderful Life in its entirety. And if this will my change dad ever this year. Found out that I haven't seen It's a Wonderful Life. I would be forced to watch it like twenty six times. Well, it's going to be on. It's only going to make twice. up <laughs> for all the times I missed it. No, they have it on DVD. Oh, there, well, there you go. Have you seen? Now you've seen a Christmas story. Being in, oh, a hundred times. And your parents, the house that your parents are living in right now, has an awesome window, an awesome bay window right in the living room. That's perfect for the table. The <laughs> table with the lamp, lamp with a leg. <laughs> The lamp with made of the leg is perfect. It looks just like in the movie. It's it hilarious. really does. The house and everything it looks. Actually, um, I'm sure my dad has told you this. He went to the elementary school that Ralphie went to in Hammond, Indiana. Mm-hmm. Yes, I've heard this story directly from your father. He's very. He's very proud of that. <laughs> he kind of is. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. So you've seen you, you've seen Miracle on 34th Street. Yes, the original. The original. And I was impressed at how. Um, you know how modern the story was with the the career woman who the divorce the divorce mom. Yeah, I mean it's 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 still very timely. Or are we allowed to use that word? Uh-oh. We had a discussion on Thanksgiving about the word timely. So it, there's yeah, it so is. It is. It, it's it it hasn't. It's not really dated. Some of the fashions are dated, but the overall thing, the Thanksgiving Day parade, the fact that that kicks off the retail season for the holidays, well, and especially and then, the. Ad- I think the idea of an adult who's been hurt and then, you know, is trying to protect her his daughter. or her kids from being hurt by not letting them be kids, I think is very timely. Exactly. Timely meaning of the times. Right. And you, we saw, you watched Bernard and the Genie with me last year, did you not? Mm-hmm. Okay. But I'm eager to see it again this my, year. My favorite all-time Christmas movie, Bernard and the Genie. I actually mentioned it in a previous podcast, but it was on a... Complete on a huge tangent that we had to cut because <laughs> it just got too long. But we'll, know, we'll we'll talk about that in another podcast. Actually, as well. yeah, we should have a holiday movies segment sometime. That's true. We should. I think we're ready well, to we're wrap, ready to this wrap one up. up. Then let me talk about our song tonight. Okay, why don't you talk about our song of the night? Sorry, is <laughs> we found this song. Um, oh, we searched on the Podsafe Music Network for um, artists who had the Beach Boys as an influence. You know, the Beach Boys are very 60s, but I find that artists who have modernized their ideas are really cool. What we have tonight is Maybe Tonight uh, by Andy Zipf. You can uh, learn more about him at andyzipf.com, A-N-D-Y-Z-I-P-F.com. He listed the Beach Boys as an influence, Radiohead, Elton John, and he's he's garnered comparisons to David Bowie and Bjork. Go Andy. <laughs> Go Andy. And, this is a, and it's a really cool song. It's It was one of those songs that as soon as we started playing, it's like, hey. The minute we heard it, we started like bobbing our heads in sync mm-hmm. and and we were in. So thanks to Andy Zip for the song. And um, if you like what you hear, go to his uh, website and find out where to buy a CD or where to see him play. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Any feedback you have, we'd love to hear on a blog. And remember, something cool will be shipped to the first person who comments on their favorite thing about Rachel Ray and their least favorite thing about Rachel Ray. You can email us at fourthtime at gmail.com or check out our show notes and leave us a message at fourthtimearound.net. Well, I guess that's it. That's it. Thanks for a great show number five. That's right. And everyone enjoy your beginning of the holiday season. Yep, we'll be back here in a week. Okay, see you later. Good night.